We are fishing for hard fighting kingies on this episode of Fishing NZ. We will be sharing the latest jigging and surface lure techniques for catching kingfish. He's not tired yet. Learn top tips for smoking your catch and Darren will share some secrets for becoming a great Spiro. Hi and welcome to Fishing NZ. Well today we're going to be going out and doing one of my favourite things, chasing kingies. Now kingies for a lot of anglers is the ultimate sport fish, and rightly so, they're tough fighting fish, they're good fun to catch, and for a lot of guys it'll be the biggest fish they ever catch as a kingfish. So today we're in Tauranga Harbour in the beautiful Bay of Plenty, and we're fishing with Ben Pokaya from Nomad Sport Fishing Charters. We're going to head out, and what we're going to show you is all the modern sport fishing techniques for chasing kingies, which involves a lot of lure fishing. Now this is very active fishing and a lot of fun. You've got to work hard to catch these fish they're not easy but when it comes together it's going to be great so what we'll do is we'll head out we'll go to one of Ben's secret spots and then we'll um, show you some of the techniques and tackle we're using to catch these fish so off we go chasing kingies when you're traveling offshore in a boat you should take extra care with your safety check your boat's seaworthiness and make sure you have enough fuel and that your batteries are fully charged take a good look at the coastal marine weather forecast in the area that you are traveling File a trip report with the local marine radio operator and tell someone where you are heading and when they should expect you back. It doesn't feel like a kingy though, it feels like something else. Here we go. That's it. What is it? It's a little kingy. That's a cooter. That's a cooter. A keeper. A keeper. Yeah. Now this is one of the best eating fish in South Africa. You, you can't find better than this. This is what we call snook. And apparently you guys don't eat it, so I'm going to have this one. Well, I don't know about this eating barracuda business. Uh, I've never seen a man so happy to catch one. But hey, I suppose there's a market for everything. And I'm not going to knock it till I've tried it. I've never eaten barracuda, so maybe if I catch another one, uh, I'll knock it on the head and uh, take it home and cook it up because uh, I'm willing to give anything a go. And I'll tell you what, there's no such thing as bad seafood in New Zealand. On the bottom. Okay, we've, we've had a few strikes from Barracuda. Now, not that they're very desirable, but it's important to check your traces. We're using a 130 pound Black Magic trace here, and even uh, a small Barracuda can chew through that. And I've got a few nicks on mine from where I've had bites, and Jason's just done the same thing. So if, you, if you're hitting Barracuda, it's important to check your trace and trim it back if it gets any frays or nicks on it, because Barracuda have got very sharp teeth. The last thing you want to be doing is losing lures to Barracuda. <laughs> that was well worked. We've been cruising around for, I don't know, 20 minutes on the edge of the bank and we're seeing absolutely nothing. Ben was getting a bit despondent to be, to tell the truth. We were chatting away and not what was happening and then all of a sudden, a big patch of fish on the sounder. Ben's out here, the rat. Just get your jigs down and he was the first one down and he's locked up and this is a real fish. I can see the way he's grumping on it. This is a serious fish.
Use a lip grip to grab them so we don't injure them. Support their weight. That's good fish, probably 12, 14 kilos. Well done, Ben. Now I've only got a tenuous grip on his lip there. He just gave me a grab as a tail. Really trace wrapped. Got him. Photos. Well done. So we just came across a good patch of sign. Come running out the back and drop the jig down. First two or three winds off the bottom. This nice little fat guy jumped on and had a good little tussle. So we're going to um, get him away and get back on him. Now jigging, it, it, it is so vast, you know, I, I'm of the old school speed jigging, yep. but mechanical jigging is a term that's used a lot today, and can you tell us a bit about that? So mechanical jigging is, um, some people call it sort of butterfly yep. jigging, it's just where you're trying to get that jig to work the surface column in a fluttering action, yep. trying to evoke a strike, yep. and, um, and turn the kings on and get them to hit it. Yep. And it's quite, but it is quite a mechanical action, I suppose. is that where the term comes from? Yeah, I guess so, because yep. it, is, it is, uh, takes quite a bit to get the rhythm. Yeah, it's I've, I've, got, I've got no no continuity, I can't dance either, but trying to get the action right, whereas I can crank really fast and that yep. works for me, so there's nothing wrong with that. And I'm good at yo-yo jigging, yep. but the mechanical jigging, you've got to get, you've got to have the right gear too, I suppose. Yeah, it all comes down to the gear, yep. the rods, the, the reels, um, and just, yeah, getting out on the water, practicing, yep. and it'll, it'll just come one day, you know, yep. you've just got to put in the effort. But with the jigs, you know, they've come a long way, these days, you know, this this is a, a 400 gram jig, so and they got I've got 500 gram here, so half a kilo lure. It's a pretty heavy lure, and you can get plumb the depths pretty quickly with these. Yep, yep, they're definitely designed to get down quickly. Mm. Um, a jig like this is definitely more of a bait fish style, so it'll yep. flutter. Big yep. heavy end on it. Big heavy end, so it yep, comes straight down, straight up, sort of thing. Yep, yep. You get some which are broader blades and they yep. flutter a lot more on the way down. Yeah, it just sort of depends on, I guess, the depth you're fishing, yep. the, the current that's moving, um, size, and yeah. it all sort of works in relation with the gear you're using as well, yeah. rods and reels. One, one thing I tend to do, and it, it might be because I'm a bit lazy, but I tend to start off with small jigs because I can get down and they're easy to work. When you're winding these things up 20, 30 times in a, in a couple of hours, you do get sore arms. And with a lighter jig, you can work them quickly as long as you can get to the bottom. Yeah, and that's definitely right. There's nothing, you'll, you'll still have a big fish take something like that. Oh yeah, I've got some massive fish on, on a small jig like this. Yeah. But um, when the big ones, when the fish are on, the big jigs are good because you just get them down there quickly yeah. and crank into them. Yeah, yeah I saw you, you, you earlier, you got down there in, in a matter of seconds and you had a fish on before I could even get my lure down. Yeah, just when we were chasing them around like how we were today, just trying to find them in their schools, a, a big lure does definitely get through that water column quicker. Yep. Coming up, Darren shares some top spearing techniques and we smoke up some kingfish. Night diving is something not many divers do. Succulent seafood like squid are easily found at night with a little stealth. Snapper are generally easy to find too. Look for their bright blue spots in the torchlight. Rays are often on the move in the dark. They must hunt at night. Give them room and they won't be a problem. This squid could have easily been missed with its great camo. Stay over the top of them and generally they won't move. During the day they are harder to approach. Try to get over the top of them again. This will give you the best results.
Being a hunter-gatherer, you have to look very hard into the weed. It acts as cover for many species. If this diver had been swimming too fast and not paying attention, the snapper may have gone unnoticed. A well-placed shot secures it. These mullet could have been missed if the cameraman had not been scanning the surface as well as the weed. This is a great spectacle of a bunch of small males trying to mate with this big female. Approach a situation like this slowly and make no jerky movements. See how close we've got without the fish taking off. Using the kelpers cover means you can approach a fish sometimes without giving away your presence. This was an unlucky snapper. Don't swim straight down on top of an edge. Start back, swim slowly forward and then peer over. Fish should not be aware of your approach. This snapper and kingfish could have been taken if they were a little bigger. Approaching the snapper over a rock is another example of good technique. Sneaking through small fish takes special care not to scare them, which in turn scares bigger fish. These trevally are unaware of the diver. They go happily about their business. Big snapper are sometimes found with trevally in this situation. This is a very fishy spot. The diver really needs to take his time not to alert these demoiselles. Use the kelp as cover. Fish love to hide in these kelp stalks. Again, good technique meant this rare fusilier was not spooked by the diver. These snapper are all trying to work out what is approaching them when the spear hits. If you do it right, these are the results you can expect. Quality fish and great fun. Don't forget to look into cracks when hunting fish. Your dinner will taste a lot better with one of these on your plate. Adam's kindly been out and actually caught a kingfish for me to show you the best way to smoke it. Now, first thing we're gonna do is actually, we're gonna cure the kingfish rather than use the salt and brown sugar. The reason for that, with kingfish, it's a very, very, um, awesome fish to smoke but it's actually you can dry it out very very quickly if not smoked correctly. Salt being a natural preservative can actually extract a lot of moisture so what we're actually going to do is we're going to use the maple cure from Bradley. Um, I've got some kingfish fillets here and what I'm going to do is actually put a couple of teaspoons of actual maple cure and one thing that I've actually managed to get my hands on is some pure maple syrup from Canada. It is actually the best. Try and stay away from the actual sugar ingredient Pour a little bit in and actually give it a good mix up. Once we've actually mixed out our maple cure with our maple syrup, what we're actually going to do is just do a nice even paste over the kingfish fillets. And these are really, really nice fillets by the way. 
and what we're actually going to do is put it in the fridge overnight to cure. What this is going to do overnight is actually going to inject a really nice maple flavour through it. All right. So for those who actually like the salt scenario, what we're going to do after that is actually we're going to put some salt on it, throw it in the smoker just before the smoking process to give it that little bit extra twang. Right, we've had our kingfish fillets in the fridge overnight and what we're actually going to do now is go through the smoking process. So one thing that we're going to do is actually just put a couple of fillets. Now I like them this size and the reason for that, everybody says smoke a fillet yay big, but when you actually chunk them like this, you can do a variety of flavours and actually vacuum pack them down and they last for weeks. So it's, it's a fantastic way to do it. So, best concept. Um, I like to add a little bit of extra seasoning at this point, so what I do is, one of my favourites is actually wasabi and chives. I mean, I've thrown in a maple flavour, but what I actually do is put a little bit of wasabi and chives on it, and then I get a little bit of ground salt for an extra bit of zing. Now at this point, through the smoking process, what this won't do is actually dry the fish out because I haven't actually killed the fish in the salt. Now a lot of people have asked me the question, the right way to actually smoke kingfish. What we actually do is we smoke it at 82 degrees for a period over four hours. One thing about the Bradley is what it's designed to do is it replaces the wood every 20 minutes on a cycle, so you actually, what you actually get out of is a clean smoke. Smoking wood in general, you can do it, if you can do it successful out of your own smoker at home, what you want to try and do is actually not overheat the wood. That's where you're going to get that strong aftertaste from. What you want out of smoked kingfish is a nice smooth flavour, slowly brought up to temperature that the fat content stays in it and it doesn't actually extract out. Then you're going to get an awesome full flavoured kingfish. So what we're going to do is actually put it in the smoker, Literally, we have set the timer for four hours and we've set a temperature range of 82 degrees. And to be honest, that's all I've got to do. I shut the smoker and I'll be back. All right, six minutes to go. Look at this, kingfish, absolutely perfect. Now this has been smoked in a maple wood, to be honest, Catch a kingfish, smoke it in different wood flavours, use different brines, use different, use different cures, get creative, have a blast with it. Go! The, uh, the thing that makes it a popper is it's got a cup face and some of the faces are very small cups, some of them have really big cups and what that does is when you're retrieving the lure, and we'll do a bit of a demonstration to show the action or you'll probably see us casting them anyway, it puts up a big foam of spray and this attracts fish to the surface to, to bite them. But there is another style of topwater fishing or topwater lure that you guys use a lot. I'm not that familiar with them. I've, I've used them a couple of times, but the stick bait. Tell me a bit more about stick baits. So a stick bait is just a, um, an imitation of a, of a bait fish. Um, very similar to a popper. It doesn't have the big cup face. It's more streamlined. Yep. And it has a, a swimming action. Okay. It pauses and swims. So that, that's what uh, gets the kingies fired up. So that it sits a little bit wet below the surface. Some of them you have a sinking and a floating yep. stick bait. Um, some of them you yeah, sort of tend to sit vertically, yep. horizontally. They sit on the surface, and then some of them actually float and go subsurface. Okay, so when's the best time to use a stick bait? So I like using stick baits over poppers personally. Okay. So I'll use these 90% um, of the time. Um, this type of stick bait here is more of a nice flat calm day, like yep, today. Like today. And uh, this guy here is made to swim subsurface, yep. so you can swim underneath the chop. Yep, okay. It gets down and gets those fish fired up. Now with, with the popper we use a quite a vigorous ripping action with the rod. What about the stick bait, same sort of action? Now, this is a nice slow sweep, yep. um, just a controlled sweep, just to get the nose of the lure under the water, yep. and get them to swim nicely. Bit yep. of a pause, wind, take up the slack, sweep again. Go. Well that just exploded! We've been out here all day, nothing doing, and then the ocean just come to life. I'm just about up Ben. Come up the side. And that was a classic case of being prepared for the. Oh, oh, I'm right, I'm right, right, right. 
for the oh. circumstance. He's got one at the front as well. Oh, he's gone, he sped it. Well, we just had a massive boil up on the surface. I was prepared to have my popper ready, tossed it in, hooked up straight away. Jason went up the bow and hooked one as well. Unfortunately, mine fell off, but Jason's still hooked up. Yeah. Damn it, he's strong. I nearly pulled me out of the side when I was on the back. I lost my footing and I always went over. He's not tired yet. He gave me two good runs up there. I don't think he's tired yet. Yeah, he hooked him right at the surface. Yeah. Right the close to the I side. saw when he took it. He was following it. And the next minute he said, Ah, oh, I've had enough of that. Alright. Control a little bit. Okay, here we go. Close. You got him? Yeah. So this is a nice average size kingy that we uh, encounter here in Tauranga. Good fighting on the top water gear and jigs as well, so they're here to play ball, we'll let them go and grab another one, eh? Nice work. After the hot half hour when the fish went nuts, it was time to head home and we were treated to a great ride and a stunning evening. Well, we're safely back at the boat ramp. Ben's uh, brought us, uh, we've done the big round trip, I tell you, we've covered some miles today and it's been an awesome day. We've, we've had a lot of experience, the fishing's been particularly hard, Ben. Yeah, it has been hard, we've worked for every fish we've got, Adam. Yeah, yeah. Well, you got a pretty good one early on. Yeah, it's just the luck of the draw, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But hey, Jason, you know, Jason's fishing with us um, at the beginning of today. He had never caught a kingfisher. Now, Jason? Yeah, I got three. And um, I mean, I'm super stoked. I mean, I, I never thought I would actually get one after yesterday. But I mean, um, yeah, the day turned out to be actually very spectacular after seeing those fish work up on the surface. Uh, the birds were diving. The fish was alive. Uh, the water was alive. And um, we are... Uh, I mean, we, awesome sight, hey, awesome, when it's just going awesome, off. Awesome. Uh, my luck wasn't in, I hooked one and uh, it fell off the hooks, but that's, hey, that's fishing, and you learn something new every time you go out. And I, Ben, I'd like to thank you for taking us out, because I did learn a lot today, and you shared a lot of your, your information with us, and it's, you know, I think it's those little bits of information that fishermen have really got to grasp, that, you know, it's not one big thing, there's lots of little things that make fishing, you know, how to fish yep. well, you know, you've got to yeah, learn those tips. The little te techniques and tips and yep. help you convert fish. Yeah, and, you know, stick baits, pop jigs doesn't matter it's all great fishing so um, but hopefully we uh, we've got Jason off the barracuda onto the kingfish now eh? yeah, I'm gonna try the king now uh, good on you, mate. it's gonna be good we've got to give these new immigrants a bit of a hard time you know he was all excited about the barracuda <laughs> to start with but I think on that note we'll leave you and that's fishing NZ for this week and don't forget to catch us next time where we'll catch more of New Zealand's great fish <laughs>